OK, so let's explain what these machines are actually doing. So let's go back to the 2 1 machine first. Now, the idea was that dots here zoom, are always worth 1. I've set up the game so that dots in the rightmost box are just worth 1 dot. However, in a 2 1 machine, where there's a second dot in the same box, they explode, kaboom, to make 1 dot one place to the left. So this dot here must be worth two of these guys, two ones. It must be worth two, two ones. By the same token, two dots here, two twos, kapow, are the same as one dot here. So this dot must be worth two twos, namely four. And two of these make one of thems, so it must be worth two fours, eight. Two of thems make one of theses, two eights is 16. Two sixteens makes the next one, 32. Two of those, 64, and so on. Bingo. So there are the values of the dots in a 2-1 machine. Now, if you tried it, you may have noticed that 13 has the code 1101. And we can check if that's right or wrong. In fact, we can see if that's right or wrong by doing the following. Let's actually put in the dots 1 dot, 1 dot, 0 dot, 1 dot. Here goes. 1 dot, 1 dot, no dots, just a big smudge, and 1 dot. 1, 1, 0, 1. Can you see now that is indeed the correct code for 13 in a 2 1 machine? 1 8, 1 4, no 2s, and 1 1. That does indeed make 13. Beautiful. All right, what's going on with the 3 1 machine? Well, same idea. I've set this game up so dots here are always worth 1. But now three of these, 1, 2, 3, explode and equivalent to one of those. This must be worth three of these. Three ones is three. Three of these guys make one of thems. Three threes is nine. Three of these makes one of thoses. Three nines is 27. Three of these makes the next one 81, and so on. All right, if you tried it, you may have noticed that the code for 13 is 111. Well, I just said that. Let's check if it's correct. Let me put in 1 dot, 1 dot, 1 dot. 1 dot, 1 dot, 1 dot. 1 9, 1 3, 1 1 does indeed make 13. That is absolutely correct. I can see it's correct. Absolutely beautiful. And by the same token, back to the 10 1 machine, dots here are always worth 1, but then 10 of these make one of those. 10 1s is 10. 10 of these makes one of those. 10 10s is 100. 10 of these makes one of thems. 10 hundreds is 1,000, and so on. And we had the code 273 being 273. Two dots, seven dots, and three dots. In fact, now we can see we're correct. Two hundreds, seven tens, and three does indeed make the number 273. In fact, listen to what I just said. In fact, I've write it in words. Two hundred and seventy-three. In English, at least, we can see we're literally speaking this 10-1 machine. We say two hundred. There it is, two hundred. Seven T, T-Y. Now, in English, that ty is short for 10. Seven tens and three. We're literally saying 273. We're speaking 10-1 machine. So that now begs the question, why does society like the 10-1 machine for doing numbers? What is it about our humanists that made us think 10 is the right thing for counting? Well, it literally is our humanists. When we think counting, we think of our physiology. We have 10 fingers. We count with 10 fingers. So 10 feels very natural to us for writing and doing mathematics, numbers, and so forth. Great. Which is interesting, because I have to know that Martians have two hands, but only have four fingers in each hand. Would they naturally think 10 for counting? No, they would think eight. So actually, Martians probably want to work with an eight one machine. I think that's very natural and normal, eight one machine. So that would work with base eight. Ah, bases. I've just used the name for this. The mathematical name for this work is bases. Welcome to base 10, everything working on powers of 10. Welcome to base two, everything working on powers of two. In fact, this is a very handy base in computer science because computers are built on little electrical switches that can either be on or off. That means they have two states. They are trying to represent all of mathematics with either two symbols, on off symbols. That's it. So actually, it's very handy to have a system arithmetic that only ever uses two symbols, one for on, zero for off. And now I can encode mathematics in computers using base two, also called binary. This is a very good base for computer science. Actually. There was talk of building optic computers based on polarized light. That is, they'll use planes of light that come in one direction, or planes of light that come in an orthogonal direction, 90 degrees, or use no light at all. So these computers will actually work on three different states. 
So they'd want to use a system of arithmetic that uses three symbols, in which case, base three is very appropriate for optic computers. If we build them, we'd be doing computer science in base three all of a sudden. But us humans, like base 10, we go with the 10-1 machine because of our physiology. Oh, actually, that's not always the case. There are some cultures on this planet that like base 20, 21 machines. Where's 20 coming from? Well, if you think about it for a moment, they must be people very aware of their fingers and toes. You can't see my toes, but we have 10 fingers and 10 toes. We have 20 digits in all. So some people think 20 is a very good way for counting. Great, they might go with base 20. In fact, we have vestiges of base 20 in the Western world. For example, I happen to be standing in the United States right now, and I know there's a very famous speech given by Abraham Lincoln called the Gettysburg Address that begins this way. He said, four score and seven years ago. All right, four score and seven years ago. How many years ago is that actually? So what's he saying there? Well, it turns out score is a very old word for 20. So he was saying four twenties and seven years ago, 87 years ago. Abraham Lincoln, that very famous speech, was actually speaking base 20 right then. Actually, if you speak French, I have to know they say 87 in a very curious way is there. Now, I don't speak French, so forgive me, but I believe 87 is something like 80 set, which literally word for word is 80 four twenties, set, and seven. Four twenties and seven, another bit of base 20 again. Oh, gets even worse, or more exciting, I should say. There are some cultures that actually think base 12 is a good way to go. And they see something in their humanness that makes them think you can count to 12 very naturally. In fact, just on one hand, you can count to 12 very naturally. How? Well, they use their thumb as a pointer, and they notice that each of the fingers is divided into three sections, in which case, counting to 12 is very natural. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there are some cultures that work with base 12. In fact, in marketing, in trade and measures and so forth, it's very good to have units of 12. How many inches are in a foot? 12 of them. What's a dozen? 12 items. Because if you're doing trade in the marketplace, for example, you often come across the fractions a half, a third, a quarter, and so forth. And 12 is a very friendly number for those fractions. Half of 12 is a good whole number six. A quarter of 12 is a good whole number three. A, a third of 12 is a good whole number four. 12 is very good for basic fractions in everyday life. However, 10 is a bit awkward. You could do half of 10 pretty well, that's great. But a third of 10, ugh. A quarter of 10, ugh. Not very good. All right, so there we have it. So society, in the Western world at least, goes with a 10-1 machine, base 10. So what I want to do now is explore the mathematics of base 10. We've got a very good visual model. In fact, this model is amazing. If we deep at this, steep, stare at this deeply enough, excuse me, we will see that a whole portal, portal of wonder and mystery and delight and intrigue and deep understanding comes just from this picture. In fact, let's go through the entire school curriculum on arithmetic and some algebra and beyond just you playing with these pictures and we'll see how magical it actually is. All right, it's gonna be a lot of fun.